Hey, we're sitting here at the Friars Club with Reels Parisi. How do you how do you not say it just like that? Wheels Parisi. It's a requirement to say it. Wheels Parisi. I even say it that way, which is kind of weird. Now, you've been doing stand-up for 20 years and used to tour with Dice. And, I mean, tell us a little bit about that. I mean, being on the road for that long, it, it's got to be crazy fun, you know? Yeah, it's pretty wild. We did. I was back with Andrew back in the arena days, you know, Madison Square Garden. And I still actually open for Dice once in a while when he's in Vegas or some road gigs. And, yeah, it's a lot, a lot of stuff we really can't talk about. Really can't talk about? No, we're friends here. Nobody's watching. We just have two million viewers. Don't worry about it. We have to wait for the book to come out. You know, we had a wild time on the road. Back in those days, that's when comedy was, uh, you know, it was rock and roll comedy. You had Kinnison in one area, Dice in the other area. We would be coming into town and, you know, kind of meet up at the radio station, do some radio. There was a few jabs at each other. It was just a great time in comedy back in the early 90s, late 80s. It was such a great time. I'm so happy to be a part of that. 23 years in doing comedy. I love it. And you know what? Yeah, uh, proudly, you're now at the Rio. I'm at the Rio, yeah. I headline the Rio uh, five nights a week, Sunday through Thursday, at the Crown Theater. It's a beautiful 800-seat room, we, you know, so we're starting to get busy there. And, uh, yeah, you can check me out over there at the Crown, me and Geechee Guy. You and Geech, well, we love Geech, too. Can you tell us one great little road story? I always like to ask out of comics. Something, one little moment you remember that you'll never forget. Yeah, we were actually in, um, in Chicago. And uh, it was at that me and Dice were together, and it was just us. There was nobody else. And we're in a room hanging out at the Four Seasons. And um, and Dice goes, uh, you know, you know, he was like we were talking about getting going out on the road, and every, he was like saying how everything is so, um, you know, it's rock and roll, and it's really, but they, he don't, people don't understand that comedy is pretty, you know, pretty boring. So you know, so what we did, we we mocked up a night backstage to make it look like we were really like the groupie situation, but you know, we were just acting. And it was just one of those crazy nights. And we, we said, All right, let's just go back to the room. But um, a lot of the stuff with being on the road with Andrew, was just, it was just really more or less very you know, laid back. And nothing really ever happened. It was nothing like it really stands out. Other than, oh, I could do, I'll tell you one thing. We were on a private plane. And we were driving. We were flying. And we actually flew into St. Louis at a private airport. One plane comes in. Another plane comes in. We get out of the plane. We go into the airport restaurant. And we had dinner with Wayne Newton. Really? Because we had dinner with Wayne Newton, and then we ate there. We all hung out. I was, you know, a new comic then. I'm like, this is freaking crazy. And we were having Wayne Newton, you know, and then and that was it. We all left. And then Wayne said goodbye, and we all said goodbye, and we moved on. So that's the greatest thing about what we do is you can constantly, it's like a fraternity. Yeah, you get to constantly meet all these great people, yeah, yeah. including yourself. Thank you very much. Thank you, Wheels. Thank you. Thank Wheels Breezy, everybody. Check them out at the Rio. See you later. Hey everybody, we're here at the Friars with Tanya Lee Davis, a very sassy tart herself. And uh, now you've been touring around the country a lot, but now you've made a home here in Vegas. Yes, I've been in Vegas for seven years, and now for the last five months I've had my one-woman show here in Las Vegas. Now see, now that's awesome. A lot of people, it's just we're going to find a home, do some stand-up, find a wall, but you wanted to do something a little different, more of like a one-woman show. Yeah, it's, uh, I call it my solo show. Yeah, one-woman show. It's more theatrical. I have a set, I have a stage, I have, uh, I have lighting cues and sound cues. It's a lot more theatrical, and it's more personal. It's more storytelling than, you know, set up and punch kind of thing, and I don't really deal with the audience much, and it's more personal level, and I really enjoy it. It's a nice change. I can tell. Well, how long have you been doing that? Uh, here in Las Vegas, five years. I did my first solo show in Scotland uh, in 2007, and this is sort of a, a different version of that show. So. Cool. And you have a lot of fans in the UK, yeah? Yes, I've been over in the uh, UK, England, and Scotland for the last seven years, and it's been very profitable. Wow. Now, uh, tell us a little bit about your one-woman show for people who don't know anything about it and should go see it. Yes, it's called uh, Tanya Lee Davis, Little Comedian Big Laughs. It's at the Clarion, which is the old Debbie Reynolds, uh, old Greek Isle Theater on Convention wow. Center Drive. It's in the middle of friggin' nowhere, but <laughs> so, so we don't get a lot of foot traffic. So you got to, if you go to wolftheaterlasvegas.com, there's information with all the shows on there. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Now, is there uh, something we can look forward to in the future that, uh, you know, a lot of comedians, you know, they, they come, they, they do their shows. I always like to ask, what is something that you would love to do one day that you've never done? Uh, I'm not one of those people that talks about doing things. I do things, so I got a whole gamut of things. I mean, I love to travel, so right now I'm sort of am living my dream. And, you know, when opportunity comes, I just go with it. If there's going to be a story at the end of it, if I might get arrested or there might be strippers at the end of the rainbow, I'm going for it just for the story. So I can, there's not just one thing I want to do because I just want to do everything. I just asked what you'd like to do, and it turned to strippers and rainbows. <laughs>
which is which is means I need to be drinking with you all night tonight. Yeah, I'm a, yeah I've got a scooter. Drunk driving on the scooter in Vegas is a must see event. <laughs> a must do event. Uh, well, thank you for being on the show, sweetie. Thank you, and uh, we'll be back. We're here behind the scenes with uh, Jerry Neaver. Uh, uh, Gary Weaver, thanks for coming on the show, Gary. You bet. Thanks, Noel. Thanks for having me, Larry. Oh, really? Really? <laughs> it's my show, and he's messing up my name. Sorry. Uh, now, you host here, yes? Yeah, I'm the host of the Las Vegas Comedy Show featuring Joe Lowers. Right on, right on. Five so, nights a week. Five nights a week? Yes, sir. See, that's a comic. Comics know how to promote. It's the first thing he goes, five nights a week, come check us out. 9 p.m., <laughs> Tuesday through Saturday. Oh, that's awesome. Right. Now, how did you end up here? How did it get all started with you here? Well, yeah, I started comedy about 20 years ago, and, and, I, and, and I've been out of it for about 10. And when I got back into it, I was looking for a club that I can get into and I could work out every night and, and start, re, uh, you know, start get back into my craft and, and start writing new material and, and really start redeveloping it. And uh, an opportunity opened up here at the club, and, and, and Joe was kind enough to let me in, and, and it, it's all been uphill since then. So, See, I think that time. I think that's the hard part as a comedian with all the traveling and all the different one-nighters for eight minutes here, seven minutes here. It's so hard to hone your craft. We all want to find a place that we can really work on it. And people think, oh, well, go jump up here, go jump up there. It's you know, it's all bits and pieces. And to finally find a place, I'm sure it's a much different animal. Oh, that is absolutely correct. It's, it's yeah. very, it's very difficult, especially with the you know if. If you if you're trying to work out material at uh, open mics, it doesn't work. That audience isn't there for comedy. You come here, you sit in front of this audience. They've paid to come in here. They're here for comedy, and 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 that's a totally different audience. And being able to come up night after night after night after night really lets you uh, perfect your material and 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 really develop an, uh, a good act. Well, that's why I always say people say, "Hey, come work out in this room." I'm like, "Why would I go out to go feel bad about my material?" Sure, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Well, awesome, man. Well, we're all going to definitely check out your show. And uh, what's what's the website so everybody knows where to check things out? Do you know? Uh, it is uh, Joe Lowers. Uh, I have no idea. Joe hey, Joe. Lowers. Hey, Joe. You're, hey, Joe, your, ho your host doesn't know your website. The Las Vegas Comedy Show.com. It's JoeLowersPorn.com. The Las Vegas, the Las Vegas Comedy Festival. Festival. Can we put it down here while I'm talking? 